Today our group will be looking at the drop jump. We have divided the drop jump into a couple phases. The step off, the take off where the feet leave the platform, deceleration which begins with initial contact and ends with max knee flexion. This is followed by the recovery squat In this experiment, we are going to compare two females. Emily, test subject one, is trained in jumping sports, and Lena, test subject two, is not trained in jumping sports. Lena does exercise, but does not consider herself a jumping athlete, and she has never performed a drop jump. Emily is a college basketball player who is experienced in lower extremity plyometrics. For the first test, the subjects are going to jump off a box that is knee height. In her first jump, we can see good eccentric control out of her hip extensors, quadriceps, and plantar flexors as she absorbs the ground reaction force. During Lena's drop, we can see a visible jarring of her legs. She does not display as much eccentric control as she absorbs the force of the ground. This can further be seen in a side-by-side -side image as Emily allows herself to go into more hip flexion, knee flexion, and ankle dorsiflexion as she helps distribute the force through her body. We are now going to look at a knee height jump from a frontal view. During Emily's drop, we see a good base of support and her knees stay in line with her hips and her feet during the deceleration phase. During Lena's drop, we see less stability, and compared to Emily, her feet fall further into pronation. When we compare the drops, we can see Lena's knees move further into valgus. It is important to highlight this movement into valgus as it can demonstrate greater strength in Emily's hip abductors, extensors, and external rotators. In order to increase the force, we are now going to jump from hip height. As Emily drops, we see her swing her arms forward, which helps her fall deeper into her squat while maintaining her balance over her center of gravity. As Lana drops, we can see her weight fall forward. She also doesn't display as much eccentric control as the quadriceps as she falls into flexion. When we compare the two jumps, we can see the difference in the arm swing. This allows Emily to change her center of gravity and get deeper into a squat. Now we're going to look at a hip height jump from a frontal view. When Emily drops from hip height, we see her distributing the weight onto both legs evenly as she lands. This is in contrast to when Lena drops. We can see her weight shift to her right dominant side as she lands. As we compare the videos, we can see the difference in the two subjects' weight as Lena shifts to the right and Emily stays centered. We can see how Emily locates the ground before initial contact. This will help her prepare for the eccentric control she needs to slow herself down during the deceleration phase. There were differences found between test subject one, Emily, and test subject two, Lena. Having had previous training in jumping, Emily displayed better balance and control throughout the movement. Compared to Lena, Emily showed greater strength of her hip extensors and abductors. This limited her movement into valgus during the landing of the jump. Test subject one, Emily, allowed herself to go deeper into a squat. This allowed the force to be distributed over a longer period of time. 